second round in Paris as we welcome you back to French Open tonight presented by Lacoste and Roger joins us. Congratulations. Thanks a lot, man. Well done. Let's talk a little bit about the state of your game right now. You've been doing this for a long time so you obviously can measure yourself well. So how about the state of your game here in Paris? Um, just Paris. I'm, I'm happy I'm through. You know, any straight set victory in the first round is a good one because you could waste a lot of energy there or even bow out in the first round, which I have done in the past here in Paris. So I'm aware of the danger of, of any first round opponent. Uh, I've practiced with Kempke, Kempke before. I know he can play well, um, but obviously knew I was the big favorite and I wanted to make sure I, you know, I was got in, in the lead and then took advantage of it. But it was a rocky match today. I was going through some phases and at the end of the day, it doesn't matter much for me as long as I'm through and hopefully I play a bit better in the second round. Won the title in Madrid. Yeah. Um, are you happy with your prep and where you are right now? Yeah, very much so because I really struggled uh, with some minor injuries before Madrid, through Madrid and then particularly also through Rome because I, it sort of flared up in the finals in Madrid. So. I, I couldn't have done any better. I won Madrid, played the semis in Rome, so that was great for me and perfect preparation after the French Open, obviously. Every time you play, you seem to add to history. So today you tie uh, Jimmy Connors with 233 Grand Slam match wins, and you become the first man to win at least 50 matches on, in all four Grand Slams. Uh, I, as you look back on the things that you have accomplished and still what's to come, perhaps, what are the things you're most proud of? Well, I've done so much better than I ever thought I would that it's, it's almost strange for me to talk about what more do you want or, or what have you done that really like surprised you because it's basically everything I've done has surprised me because uh, I do come from a small village in Switzerland and we don't think that big, you know, in, in Switzerland. We think, okay, I mean, if I, if I can make it on tour, that's a great effort. If I can maybe one day in all, in all craziness win Wimbledon, that would be amazing. And I've done so much more than all of that that Anything I do right now is just incredible, but obviously at one point you get uh, used to winning so much and then you're like, okay, there's a certain things I would like to reach. And uh, I mean, I would love to win 100 titles. I have 74 right now. I don't know if it's possible. I don't think it is possible, but we'll, we'll see how that goes. And uh, look, I've just uh, now this streak. I like longevity. You know, I've really tried to put a stamp on, on men's tennis because I used to be famous for not being consistent. And here I am talking about some of the most consistent streaks in tennis. It's scary actually for me, but Jimmy Connors was one of the greats of the game, and still is. And for me to, to tie a record uh, with someone like him who's played for over 20 years on tour is, is, is very nice, of course. You've talked about what is still to come perhaps for you. How important is the Olympic gold medal in singles as you, as you kind of lay out the future? It's big, it's big. Um, I had chances, you know, uh, a couple of times in Athens when I was world number one and then in Beijing as well when it was on, on a quick hard court. But, you know, just didn't make it. But uh, I'm very happy I was able to win Olympic gold uh, in, in the doubles there, which takes, to me, a lot of pressure off going into Wimbledon now. Not a must win at Wimbledon, at, at the Olympics, but uh, I will do everything I can to, to get the Olympic gold. It would be a dream come true, and particularly the combination Olympics at London, held at Wimbledon for us, the tennis players, it's, it's amazing. Going back for a moment to the small kid from Switzerland, was there a moment where it all kind of came crashing down on you where you realized my goodness I, I am in this journey and it's an amazing thing yeah I mean, absolutely I when I won junior Wimbledon back in 98 and then finished the year as the world, world's top junior I was like I'd love to do this in the men's you know <laughs> easier said than done it took me a long time to get there but then all of a sudden you know uh, you know just I don't know just being able to go so far it has been it's been amazing and Along the way, you have these big matches, like the, the match with Sampras, oh, I have to come back to that one. That was my first Wimbledon center court appearance, my only time playing Pete. Those matches or against other top players, even though you lose sometimes, gives you an idea, I'm close, or I can beat them. Maybe not every day, and maybe only once a year, but I can do it, and now it's just a, a matter of trying to string more victories like this together in the particular the same week. And then along the way, life happens. So yeah. now you're obviously your circumstances have changed. You travel with your family and your children. And, and I'm curious how logistically that works. So do you like go off to the office and then you do your you play tennis, you practice whatever you have to do. And then you have your family time daily or do you just remove yourself basically for a couple of weeks? Um, no, what do I do? They, they're always with me. Uh, so that's beautiful for me, you know, spending a maximum amount of time with them. I, I really love it, particularly this this age right now, they're turning three in July and 
they're learning so many things right now, you know, scootering and swimming and running around and climbing up trees and whatever it is. It's a, it's a lot of fun, really, and I don't want to miss this time. And my wife, she's the best, you know, we, we pack up so many bags, it's like ridiculous, but we have to make it work and we try to make it a sort of a home away from home feeling um, for all of us, particularly for the girls, because uh, there is a lot of sacrifice, but we try to make it as easy as possible for them. And they seem they, that they really love it, you know, on tour and always come to different places and they never ask where's home. They understand where home is, but they, they never scream about it and that's nice. This is the and norm, basically. It's the norm, yeah. And so when on an off day, when I'm only gonna go for practice maybe, I try to put it while they're afternoon napping, you know. So then I leave maybe just as they're going to bed and then I come back once they sort of wake up. So I try to do it that way and then I have the chance to see them in the morning and if I'm really that tired that I need to sleep in in the morning, then I miss them in the morning, but at least I see them in the afternoon. So I consider myself a very lucky father. So before we let you go, um, compare your game right now to when you were really a dominant number one and you didn't have anybody threatening you. Are you playing better tennis now than you did then? I think I'm a better player today, for sure. I, I feel more strong in the shoulder area, the way I hit my backhand, uh, serving overall, how I'm able to you know, serve more consistently longer over a longer period of time. I mean, the game has changed again since then. You know, it's become more athletic even. The, the strings have maybe changed more. There's more players using these power rackets. You know, all these things make little differences. You know, and, you, and the problem for me, I guess, is I have to adjust. I don't gr grow into this generation. I have to forget almost how I played in 2003, 4, 5, and 6, and then I actually have to adapt to maybe a new kind of Roger Federer. And how like. do you do that? Well, you just work differently, you know, or you, uh, you know, play guys differently. Before, guys maybe weren't serving as big who were famous for their returns. Mm -hmm. Today, these guys are all six foot three and serving really big and returning really big, a big two, and they have longer reach. So you have to be smarter of maybe the way you play against them. And they can, many players now as well can absorb pace very well, I think, you know. And so it's, the game has changed, but I'm happy I'm still right up there and have a chance for world number one, so it's great. Roger, always a pleasure. Thank you very Thank much you. for being with us. It's been my pleasure. We'll be back with more from Paris and French Open tonight, presented by Lacoste on Tennis Channel right after this.